Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Uh, I'm glad that we're all back together. It's been, I think, three weeks or almost one month. I haven't been able to broadcast. Um, just keep in mind that uh, I wasn't able to broadcast from my my house, and uh, because we ran out of electricity, <laughs> and uh, had to come and find a hotel that supports. They have a co-working area, so I'm broadcasting from here, and uh, I can't talk too loud. So this is going to be a quiet broadcast. Uh, the topic of this week is going to be how to remain still and uninvolved and detached from what is going on in the world. How you can stay in your center despite all the craziness is happening, all the noise. So we're, we're going to talk about that. And for the moment, as always, we're going to do a short meditation. And uh, what we're going to do is the best way of doing a simple meditation is really, really simple, is bring your attention, divert your attention inwards if you bring your attention inwards and look for your thoughts pay attention to your thoughts your thoughts are happening and look at your thoughts and follow your thoughts to the source see where do your thoughts come from Where do, they, where do they come from? Just follow the source. Just follow. Follow the source. Like you got a thread and you're just pulling it. And just go in. Look for it. Keep going inside. Keep going, going, going. And see where do they come from. And if you do it uh, correctly, what happens is your mind goes into silence. You get to the source of the thoughts and everything becomes quiet. So just relax, take a deep breath, and dive inwards. To the source of your thoughts. And the deeper you dive in within yourself, the more quiet everything becomes. You still will hear the noise, but you get distant 
from the noise. Yeah, so just relax, stay centered, follow the thoughts, see where they come from, and very quickly they disappear. There is no thoughts. You dive into an infinite pool of silence. It's all quiet.
ahí, ahí yo creo el, lo que tenemos que ir definiendo es estas columnas de acá que yo creo que son un poco
Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. We continuously is our interaction with two worlds. There is our external world that we are very much focused in. And uh, most of our attention is on that. And there is the inner world. And the inner world we traditionally don't, can you hear me fine? Can you hear my voice? Yeah, okay. The inner world normally does not get explored by majority of people on the planet. And some people have a calling and through that calling, they begin to explore the inner world a lot of times the calling happens through some kind of trauma and something drastic needs to happen. You get in a car accident, you have a near death experience, your partner leaves you, um, your love of life, uh, something happened to a member of your family, uh, there's death, there's major accident, there's loss, loss of something happen and um, there's some kind of shock treatment that shocks you and creates a jolt into an awakening of exploring the inner world. The rest of the world, the rest of the majority of people on the planet, their attention is on the other world. So, and that gets very boring. It gets very boring as well as when your attention is on the other world means that you believe that the world outside of you is real because that's what you have been told and that's what you experience. And no one has ever told you that it's not real, so you have no reason to believe that it's not real. Naturally, your parents haven't told you that, your teacher hasn't told you, the priest, the schooling, education, everything that you encounter from the time you were born to the time you die, is telling you the world outside of you is real 
and you need to accumulate and work on things to get things from the outside. Can you hear the noise from the outside or no? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, so. So, because we do not get spiritual teachings and training from early age, and I'm talking about majority, I'm not talking about the few people that they were lucky or enlightened enough to have enlightened parents. That's very, very rare. I'm talking about majority of people on the planet. So we go into this hypnosis and this deep belief that whatever you see is real. So when the world that you really believe it's real starts to crumble and fall apart, then you start to panic and fear and worry and anxiety takes place because it's not supposed to crumble. It's not supposed to change. It's supposed to stay the way you are used to it. And when I say the world outside of you, I'm also referring to three very important elements. Because the world outside of you, it's all objects. It's an object. This is an object. This is an object. It's all objects. And these objects, they come and go. The objects do not stay in the same place. They come and go and they change. So none of these objects in the world outside of you remain the same. There's nothing in the world outside of you that remains the same. Even Himalaya, the mountain, it's changing. It's not what it used to be 100 years ago or 500 years ago. Where you live, your city has changed. All the buildings that you know, they have changed. Or maybe one or two stayed the same. The rest of them been torn down and then they rebuilt. Climate has changed. Governance, governments come and go. Presidents come and go. Kings and queens come and go. Prime ministers come and go. Your favorite actors, act actresses, eventually they get old and they're no longer the way they used to be. The athletes that you admire, they come and go. And your body, which is an object in this world, is changing all the time. Every day it's changing. Not even it's the same body from yesterday to today. Yesterday, you felt amazing, energetic, clear face, clear skin, Today you wake up, boom, you got something here. You got a little bit like inflammation here. You got a little pain here. Then the next day it changes. So your body is always changing. And eventually your body, your best friend that you think you are, this body, you really believe this is who you are because this is what you grew up with all of your life. So you think you are this body. And you've been together for 50 years, 
60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years. You've been together through a lot of ups and downs. And one day your body will give you this. This, You know what this is? In American society, then this means fuck you. So your best friend that you've been with all of your life, one day is going to tell you, fuck you. You're diagnosed with some disease. Your doctor tells you, I'm sorry, but you're going to die in three weeks. And you're like, what are you talking about? I've been with this one all my life. But your body says, hasta la vista, baby. I'm going. So your body is an object too. What else is an object? All of your emotions, see how much you change, your emotions change in one day. You wake up in the morning and you feel good. You go to your computer chain, check the computer, stock market, Bitcoin is down, real estate is down. Then your mood changes. Or you get an email from somebody that changes your mood. By noon, you're depressed. Then you go and eat some ice cream, cry a little bit or talk to your girlfriend or boyfriend and go for a run. And by afternoon, you feel better. And by the evening, you go sit with your family, friends, kids, and you're jolly again. How many times your mood changes in one day? It goes up and down and up and down. So that is also an object. It's an object because it comes and it goes. I meet people telling me, I am always happy. How can you always be happy if you're focused on your moods? I'm always happy as long as I get everything I want. Everything in life goes my way and I get the best of everything. Then I'm always happy. But do you always get what you want all the time? Is everything going your way all the time? That doesn't happen. So your moods, your emotions, your feelings are objects. They come and they go. Then you have your nemesis. You got this love and hate relationship with another best friend who's also your enemy. And that's your mind. It's your thoughts. This one, oh, 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 it can take you into some dark places. Especially if you don't know how to deal with it. And that's what happens to most people on the planet. They believe what they're thinking is who they are. They believe they are their thinking mind. They believe that their thoughts are who they are. How often in your life you have somebody come and tell you that you are not your thoughts? How often does anyone tell you this? You're not even your name. You're not even who you think you are.
it's rare when that happens in life. Majority of people on this planet are in slavery. So now we're talking about the COVID, we're talking about some countries are locking you in, and unless you get the vaccination, you're not allowed to go to a restaurant, you can't go to a bar, you can't go to a gathering, you can only go to, a, to buy some food. And now, those of you who used to living free and live in freedom, you think you're a prisoner and you are a slave. I have to tell you, you're absolutely wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You have been a prisoner and a slave from the time you were born. Because you don't know what freedom is. It just changed its form. You've never been free. You're still a slave. You know, it's the same thing they say that the American Civil War in 1880, 1868 ended the slavery in America. Slavery, it never ended. It's just an illusion. It just changed its form. Same thing as the situation. You've never been free. The freedom you thought you have was illusory. It was just simple, simply an illusion. Now it changed its form. Unless you find inner freedom, you are always a slave. What is freedom? So you can travel anywhere you want to go. You can go to any restaurants you want. You can sleep with anybody you want. You can buy a car. You can buy a house. You can do whatever you want to do, but it's all happening in the other world, outside world. You're doing these things in the outside world. What about inside? Are you free inside? Or are you haunted by worry? fear, anxiety, how much time do you spend a day thinking about what is going to happen to me? What is going to happen in the world? What's going to be the future? How can I secure myself? Oh, there is a disease. Oh my God, I'm going to get the disease and die. So I need to hide from people. I have one million dollars and that's not enough because I'm not safe. I need to have ten million dollars. I have a house here in Tulum. I have a house in Los Angeles. I have a house in Spain. I got cars. I got land. I got money. But now I'm worried because somebody is going to come and maybe they kidnap my children. Maybe I get cancer and I die. Maybe something happened to my children. I want you to pay attention. How much time do you spend during the day worrying about your life? How much time do you spend during the day regretting your past, thinking about what you should have done in the past, how you should have been different, 
what an idiot you are. I'm so stupid. I could have done this. I could have done that. How much time do you spend thinking about the past? You only know. And how much time do you spend during the day with no thoughts? No thoughts at all. You need to just pay attention to that. And then you're going to see how much time do you spend about what other people think about you? How much time do you spend about, oh, like, oh yeah, my daughter went on a vacation and she hasn't called me for three days and you're panicking and all you think about is bad stuff. Your, your daughter, your son went on a vacation and they haven't called you for three days and now you are so worried. Something happened to her. Maybe she got kidnapped, maybe she got raped, maybe she got in a car accident, maybe something. Your mind is going into all these dark places. Or your man or your woman or somebody you're emotionally attracted to or connected to and you don't hear from them. See where your mind goes. Your mind immediately goes into dark places. Oh, she doesn't love me anymore, or she found another man, or he doesn't love me anymore, or you immediately go into a negative dark place and you take it personally. You think it's aiming at you immediately. Well, what does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? He didn't call me. She didn't call me. What does that mean? You immediately go into processing that what is wrong with you. And you call that freedom. You're not free. You haven't been free. So don't worry about the world, what's going on. that you have lost your freedom because of COVID-19, you've never been free. Okay, let's move COVID. It's free, you can go everywhere you want. And I give you $10 million, you can do anything you want. What are you gonna do with your mind? Because wherever you go, this monster goes with you. How are you going to get rid of this one? What are you going to do about it? I give you all the money in the world and all the freedom in the world. Now you're worried about the IRS is going to come and take taxes from you. You're worried about getting kidnapped because you're very rich. You're worried about losing all your money, land, and position. So you're going to find something to worry about, no matter what. I know this very well, because I've gone through it for years. And I know it very well, because I have family that I grew up with, that they're always worried about something no matter what, something.
freedom is when you finally have somehow through your work been able to realize identify that your thinking process is not who you are your emotions are not who you are your body is not who you are your money that you really hang on to it is not who you are your children they're all gonna go one day your kids your friends every everyone is gonna go everything is gonna go and this apparent freedom it's going to change to something else it always changes so that's not the thing either so what do we do what is the solution how am I supposed to live in this life and be free? And be happy? How do I do that? What is it I need to do? What is the cost of it? I want to be free. When I came across Master Punjaji in Lucknow, India, in my youth, and I sat in front of this Buddha, this giant, and Master Punjaji, he was like still, he was like, this this man he looked like he was 100 meter tall he looked like a mountain and it looked like no matter what you do you cannot move him he is like still in complete stillness. Nothing could move him, no news, no world events, no matter what happened. He was solid as a rock, more actually rock, mountain would come and learn from master. A mountain had to come and learn from Punjaji to learn how to be still. Unless you learn this, and unless you cultivate it and teach yourself and work on yourself, you will remain in slavery. Your slavery is not going to end. Because it's not in the utter world. Your happiness, your peace is not in the utter world it's not in the other world so if you're looking for it in the outside world you are absolutely wasting your time because you will never find it
you have to bring your attention inwards and look inside for that which inside of you is still. What is inside of you that is still? What is it inside of you that doesn't change? What is it inside of you that is observing changes? When you're thinking and you have a lot of thoughts, what is it observing the thoughts? You have all these thoughts. How is it being observed? Who knows it? Or you wake up in the morning and you feel very depressed. Or you feel very happy. Or you get some news from the girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, da, 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 da. And you crash emotionally. How do you know? that you are depressed, how do you know that you are happy? How do you know that? Does somebody come and tell you you're happy or somebody come and tell you you're depressed? You get a note. How do you know that? Something inside you, there must be something that doesn't change in this world, in this life, in you. Something must be always remaining the same. So you can compare things. When you're, you're really happy, you compare that to this. And when you're very sad, you compare it to, to this. People say, I have a lot of thoughts. I got a very busy mind, Zarathustra. I'm always thinking. How do you know you're always thinking? You cannot be your thoughts. If you were your thinking process, if that was your identification, then you would have never known that you're thinking that would have been your only reality thinking so you would have never been suffering from a busy mind because that was the only reality you would ever have People say, I'm depressed. Well, how do you know you're depressed? Because if that was your nature, you would have never known. That would be your only reality. And since we are in the dimension of duality, so the opposite of it exists too. So there must be one thing, one measuring point in this life inside you that doesn't change. Look for that, my friend. Look inside yourself for that which doesn't change. And if you find that, then you are instantly free. Like this. Like that awakening they talk about, boom, happens like that. You become free permanently. 
And then you don't have to do any of these jumping jacks anymore. Go do breath work, go be vegetarian or give up sex or have sex or whatever. You don't have to do any of those things because you already discovered that which who you are. Something here in this world, one, there's only one thing here in this world that does not change. Everything else is changing in front of that. And that thing is inside yourself. All these other spiritual jumping jacks we do, all this spiritual practice we do, is to discover that place. But it's not being taught to us correctly. And that's also by design. It should be in an ideal world or ideal spiritual school, this should be taught to the spiritual seeker from day one. So the spiritual seeker doesn't go waste their time for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and 10 different lifetimes to come to this understanding. So it's not being taught. Few people on the planet, they come to that realization. And then they become free. They come to inner freedom. Find this place inside you, which is still. I'm going to give you some clues. And practice on that. Practice on this daily, every day. Bring your attention to it. Practice on this. Cultivate this attitude with yourself. See, this is the mistake most people do. They go these all these workshops and this therapy to work on their past issues. Okay, I had daddy issue. I had mommy issue. I got this emotional issues. So what do they work on? They work on the sense of an individuality. They work on the I. I am Zarathustra. I am somebody. And this character was hurt in childhood. So this character has a memory. And I was hurt when I was five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old. My daddy did this. My mommy do that. Now I'm going to do workshops to fix the character to fix the I, the I thought. I'm trying to fix that. But that never gets fixed because it's going forever. Why don't we bypass that and come to where that character is being observed? Who is the observer of Zarathustra? Who is the observer of the me, I? I wake up in the morning. The first thought I have is the first thought every human being on the planet has. Did you know that? Whether you're from China and you're from Africa and you're from South America or from America or Europe, Every single human being on this planet has the same thought when they wake up in the morning. Same thought. And that thought is me, I. So 
I say, I, with me comes the entire story. Oh, poor me, I come from Iran and I went through revolution and my daddy beat me and I had to escape and I came here and I had to work very hard and da, 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 da. you have this story. You got this story going on attached to the sense of I, the sense that I am someone and I'm separated from everything else. Everything else is outside of me. You have this sense of I thought of you with your story. If you can go beyond that, then you find freedom. But if you are very identified to the story, then you're in a prison. Because you're trying to fix the story. So what do we do? You learn to be still. You practice on this part. Stillness is what? Oh, okay, I'm going to go and work with my therapist. No, you are working with your therapist about some story that happened. It's in your memory, and you're going to your childhood, so you're going to relive it. So you're going to activate your mind to think. That's not... That's not it. You're going to stay in a prison. You have to learn a way not to think. If there are no thoughts, then there is no Zarathustra. There is no Zarathustra with a story. If I have no thoughts. Okay, I give you an example. Who are you if you are not thinking? Who are you? Tell me. Can you tell me who you are? If you have no memory, if you lose your memory, and I ask you, who are you? And you, there's no thoughts. Your mind doesn't work. Then where is your life story? Then who are you? Your story disappears. You're completely fresh and brand new as if you were born today. Because there is no story there. Huh? Make sense? Yes? No? I don't know. Is it clicking? So what Master Punjaji used to teach us, he would teach us to be still, stillness. Stillness means what? I'm here. This morning I get a phone call, for example. That, oh, Zaratustra. Um, somebody stole your car. Your car is gone. Okay? And I'm really still. Then you get a phone call. Zaratustra, somebody hacked in your account and stole all your money. And you're really still. Then the next day you get a call that Zaratustra, you went for that blood test. I'm sorry, you have cancer, and you only have three months. In three months, you're going to die. And I'm still, 
I'm not reacting to any of it. I'm staying still. What do normal people do? Hey, Jane, do you have cancer? Ah, I got cancer. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Because then it shows that Jane is very identified to her story. Instead of being the observer of the story. So now the observer is outside, is observing. But when you identify with it, then you're going to have to suffer. There's ups and downs. So you want to be free, you have to create a system of coming outside of your story, coming outside. Not just saying it here or telling me, sending me a message, oh, so Tistra, I've been practicing, I am really still. No, that's nice, I appreciate it. But demonstrate you're still in the face of a catastrophe, in the face of a bad news, in a real life. And stay still. Anybody has any questions? So let's open it up for anyone has comments, questions. No? Nothing. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to bite you. I already had breakfast this morning. How you doing, Casey? Nice seeing you. Hi. Uh, so staying still, uh, is that equal to not having any emotions? Who, who is this? It's Raiden. Who? Raiden. Oh, Raiden. Hi. Hi, Raiden. Hi. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, being completely still, is that equal to not having any emotions? No, you have emotions because you can't help it. Emotions come and go. Emotions are always going to come and go. Thoughts are always going to come and go. Okay, but... Uh, uh, but, if, but if you can observe your emotions then you are separated from them okay what you want to do is you want to practice and you want to practice on your original seat you want to always come back to your seat where you're sitting which is the observer the witness you are Watching emotions. Emotions come and go. So go back to your original question. And I... Yeah, so uh, being still uh, equal to not having any emotions or feelings. Right. No, you will have... Because, see, this teaching is not about becoming a robot. No, but uh, I just thought that, um, okay, uh, I'm being still and I get the message that I, uh, that I have cancer and um, not reacting with any emotion to that. Yes, you start practicing with little things in life, okay? Mm -hmm you develop this ability not to react you cultivate you get in a practice of not reacting to things you hear the bad news 
And the bad news is going to bring emotions in you, but you just watch it. Watch. You get... Okay. Let's say you and I are dating. We're boyfriend, girlfriends. We're seeing each other for a year or two, right? And one day I come out and tell you, right then, I'm not into you anymore. You know? I met someone younger. I want to go with her. And you have been practicing stillness so you say you know okay you take it and it has nothing to do about me this is not about me breaking up with you this is about you observing these emotions coming inside you that it wants to tear you apart but you just watch it Mm -hmm. and you don't identify with it you're feeling it in your body of course you're not a robot you're going to feel hurt you're going to feel angry you're going to feel rejected you're going to feel like you're not good enough you're not pretty enough you're going to feel everything but you do not react to it you only watch them Because you know your original seat. Your seat is the observer. If you, if you get identified with it, it will crush you. Because you're, you're under this huge wave falling down and it's going to smash you. But the moment you stay in the stillness, that big wave loses its power it has no power over you so you want to make this a daily practice with little things little rejections every day we get rejected every day something happen you don't like get in a practice of not reacting to it train yourself to stay still but you will feel it. Master Punjaji was a fully realized enlightened master. But he would cry, he would laugh, he wasn't a robot. You feel everything. You have compassion for the world. You have compassion for other people. You feel the pain of all humanity. You feel the joy of humanity. You're not disconnected from your feelings. But you're not identified either. This is the key. This is the, the gem. This is the diamond. This part. If you understand this part and you implement it, you become free forever. Otherwise, you're going to be in a pendulum of ups and downs. Things go your way, you're very happy. Things crash, you're miserable. And that's how people go to war. That's how governments are able to manipulate public to go to war. Religious wars. By playing with your emotions. And then you're just like ready to go and kill because you don't know how to be still. So you react. That's what's going on with COVID and all the news all the time we're hearing. Look how up and down you go. Observe yourself. You can make notes. You can have a little notebook and see how much up and down you go during the day whenever you watch the news. And you practice to stay disconnected from it. You hear it, you absorb it, you feel it, but you don't react. Is it making sense, Raiden? 
Yes. You brought a very, I appreciate, you brought a very, very good question. I, I feel everything. I feel things more than ever before in my life. I've become more sensitive than ever. I can feel people's pain. I can feel people's sorrow, their happiness, the world's sorrow. I can feel the fear more than before. So the more I've come to this understanding, the more I can feel. Okay, so I haven't become a robot. I haven't become like a machine that doesn't feel. I feel. But I don't identify with it. I feel it. When I'm feeling it, it's fully there. And then it goes. It doesn't rule me anymore. As I mentioned, I'm surrounded by family, friends that are worried a lot. Every time I talk to my family or some of my friends, oh, Zaratustra, be careful. Uh, the new COVID is everywhere and everybody's dying or worry, 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 worry. And I listen to it. Yes, yes, mother. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, my brother. Be careful, da, da 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 There's going to be a big stock market crash, and da 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 da, da, da and don't spend your money, and da, 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 da. yes, 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 yes. And I hang up the phone and I go do my own thing. I do my own thing because I follow my intuition. My intuition says, go spend money. Or my intuition says, go do this. Or don't spend money. I don't need the news to tell me what to do. I don't need anyone else to tell me what to do. I do listen to it. But I have this one tell me what to do. Better than anything else. That doesn't mean if I am today to drive back, going home, somebody tells me, Zaratustra, don't go that way. Something, there's something bad has happened, go that way. I say, yes, I listen. I go the other way. I'm not stubborn to say, oh no, it's gotta be only this. Of course I listen. Because existence speaks to you. But I am not here to take other people's fears and worries. I walk my own path because I generate my own light. And so far, it has brought me to this point. So you want to cultivate. Remaining the witness, the witness of your thoughts, the witness of your emotions, and the witness of your body, and the witness of the world, because none of it is real. It's not real because it's an object. It's not real because it changes. Real is that which doesn't change. The only thing which is real is that which doesn't change. Anything else? Anyone else? Casey, you were going to say something. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Good. Nice it's having good. you back. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you hung in there because we had a little three week 
thing. So I was hoping you're still going to come back and see us. Oh, you bet. Absolutely. Yeah, I was, I figured, I, I figured you had stuff going on with moving and stuff, but yeah, yeah I, I'm glad, I'm glad you're back and hope everything's really good for you. So, um, yeah, that, that, that message that you brought forward today was just, um, beautiful and so profound and really powerful. Um, I think it's exactly what I needed to hear to move forward. Um, yeah, I mean, we just, we really need to find the way to be the observer and not, um, just observe and don't really focus on it and let things bother you. Like, um, like find that which is inside that doesn't change. Um, and I, I think overall, for a while now, I have been doing fairly good with not allowing the external to bother my anything. I mean, I, I you know, I don't, I don't watch any news because I know it's all BS anyways, and ninety nine percent of it's fabricated lies. But, you know, regardless of what I hear, I, if I hear bad news, oh my gosh, the world's going to blow up tomorrow and over there. And it's like, I don't need, I pay no attention to it. I just observe it. I, 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 I hear it. I say, okay, well, what I let it go. I don't focus on it. I put no emotion into it. Right. Um, that's exactly what I've been doing since before COVID started. I haven't, you know, I've just simply been observing and I've been in the, the realization that, you know what, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I, I just need to be focused here and now, you know, in this moment and not focus on the what ifs. You know, because it, there's no point. What are you gonna What are you gonna gain by? It, yeah. You know, the the negativity, like all these people. Right. That, obviously, this is their main agenda to right. try to promote this this fear in everybody. And I've seen that blaringly obvious from day one. And I and I have totally refused to give them any ounce of my energy whatsoever. Right. You know, so I, I feel like I've been doing really well with that. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, the, the stuff yeah. you said today, really, that's the – so I've been with that. But, but like, what you're talking about today, that's really what I need to kind of break through with. You know, I mean, I've, I've been doing a lot of meditation. And overall, my thoughts, like, when I, when I go to meditate – and even if I'm just, you know, here walking around doing whatever, for the most part, I don't feel like I have a thousand random thoughts going through my head. You know, I feel like I'm fairly centered. Um, and but when I'm, you know, even when I meditate, it's even better. Typically, I don't have many thoughts. I might have like a subtle thing come in, like, "Oh, there's a noise over there," you know, or right. Um, you know what I mean? Right. But I don't have like this play in my head playing out like, oh, my God, yeah, so-and-so hates me or th this happened in this part of the world. Like none of that ever happens. So I'm way I'm past that, you know, as far as to that, that source within, like you're saying. I'm so I'm at the point. What's that? No, I'm happy to hear that. The yeah. you know, a lot of. Um, the deeper we go, I mean, at one point, we we'll all have to get together at one place. Hopefully, when it opens up, I can have a one week or something like that workshop. So when we're together, sitting together, we're eight hours a day, we're working, 
doing the work, then I can step by step show these things. It's a different, it's easier that way. It's like, okay, what do you mean by stillness? Or what do you mean that? Because I used to think that when the master was telling me about being still, means I thought Papaji would never get jealous, would never get angry, would never get horny, would never get um, impatient. Uh, he would never get afraid. That's what I thought. I thought, like, when you get to this level, you're like Superman. But then I realized that that's not it. It's not that you don't feel things anymore. You feel things more than ever. It's you are not identified with any of it. In the moment you react, in the moment you feel something, if somebody I'm in love with and come and tells me that she doesn't love me anymore and she wants to walk away, of course you're going to feel emotions because you're not a robot. It's not a machine. And you, your body is going to process it. Your emotion is going to process it. And that's allowed. But there's no secondary reaction. You go through whatever you have to go through in the moment, in one day, in a few hours or whatever. But then a day or two days after, you're completely free. There's no more longer of this story going with you of months of suffering and processing and being in heartache. You take the shock, you take the hit, you absorb it, you process it. It's over and you move on with your life. So of course, in the moment you feel, of course it hurts. So these are some of the things that one day I hope we all can get together again, like the past, and we can have a week or a week seminar workshop, and I can just go through every step by creating um, scenarios so we can play roles. And I can show everybody that how it's being done. Hopefully we'll get into that. Oh, when we can make that happen, that'll be that'll be perfect. Because I, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there in a split second. So, right. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's where right. I'm at right now. Is just I, I, I need to try to, like you said, you know, find that. I, I, I'm at the point where I need to like literally find what is driving everything that's inside of me. Like you said, that that's exactly where I'm at. That's where I need to be. I need to find that spot. You know, beautiful. You just, just work on bring your attention inwards and go into the silent place where there are no thoughts. And when you come to the place that there's no thoughts, then everything disappears. And the world disappears. There is no world because there is no you. There is no me. There is the presence. So you're doing a good job. Just hang in there. <laughs> Anybody else wanted to share anything with us? I just want to say thank you. I really needed to hear that today. So I'm very grateful. Yeah, yeah. you're thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday, and hopefully I'll broadcast it from my place. <laughs> so I think we scheduled the 22nd. It's going to be 22nd, and uh, I don't think we have 29th on the schedule yet. Uh, most probably I will do the 29th for sure. After the new year on the fifth, we're going to have the more that, but definitely for now, the 22nd is scheduled. So we'll have that one.
I don't know how the recording of this is going to come out. Amir is going to find out whether it's worth to uh, edit it and put it up. Otherwise, we may be able to just do the podcast. I'm not sure. I'm wearing my mic, and um, hopefully the quality of it is good enough. But since I'm in a public place um, and there's noises, um, I don't know how it's going to turn out. But look, look it up. We're going to email it to you if there is anything uh, worth rec um, processing and editing. We're going to email it to you, especially to those of you who are on Zoom. Um, my social media pages are Zaratustra. 5D. My email is info at zaratustra.tv and my website is zaratustra.tv. So feel free to be connected and sending me a message whenever you feel like it. Unless somebody has any comments or questions. Um, Oh. Zarathustra, real quick. Yes, yes sir. Um, I just wanted to remind you that um, I don't know if your assistant was able to work out that that file that was I wasn't able to access. Um, was it to? I think it was called to touch, feel, see, sense the. Right. Or, yeah, you you purchased something from us. Uh, yeah, I was able to access all of them except for that bottom one, and I, and I did an email. I know you're okay. busy, so I, it's, I just no, wanted to remind. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Please always let us know. Amir mm -hmm. was in Dubai. He just came back from Dubai. I uh, I talked to him, asked him about that. He said he uh, thinks everything's fine. But right after we we finish up here, I'm going to talk to him. Amir, are you there? I'll figure it out, have them contact you and send it send it to you and figure out what the problem is. Yes, I'm here, sure. I will was, I was check yeah. it out and send it to did, you. Did, did you hear what Casey said? Yes, I did. Yeah, sure. I'll okay. send it to you. Okay, it just, just guys know what, what's going on is when I try to click on the link to open the the Dropbox, Dropbox program opens and then a message comes up on the top saying file or video does not exist. And I've tried it accessing it from all devices and it's so it, it, it seems like uh, the file is there or something. I don't know. It's weird. But it's yeah. just on that one. All of the links work fine. So just um, on that or, you know, field touch sense the orc field or I think that's what it was called. I can't remember the exact uh, Worrying, yeah, I'll but find what is the issue and send you a new link. No problem. Uh, thank you, sir. I, I appreciate it, guys. I'll do that. Sure. Thank thanks you so for much. your pay. Yeah, thanks for your patience, Casey. I appreciate it. All right, my friends. Uh, they turned on the air conditioning in here, and it's kind of driving me nuts. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Very nice seeing you again. I was. I missed you all. And I'm very happy uh, we were able to do our academy today. At one moment today when electricity was gone in that part of town, I said, oh, my God, no, you know, again, here in Tulum, you guys remember last year we had a lot, I have a lot of problems. And it was like this, this nightmare is haunting me where... <laughs> But I'm glad it worked out and we're fine. So very nice seeing you all. Sending you lots of love. And look forward to seeing you next week. And feel free if you have an idea about the topic you want me to talk about, just let me know and, and uh, we'll talk about it. Namaste, namaste.